Hey, restaurant pros, are your restaurant employees stealing from you? Stay with me and we'll talk about it. I'm David Scott Peters, restaurant expert, coach, and creator of the Restaurant Prosperity Formula. I've been coaching restaurant owners since 2003, and I'm really glad you're here to learn. Today, I want to talk about restaurant employee theft. But before I do that, if you like tips and tricks like this, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and oh yeah, that bell so you're notified when my next video tip comes out. And for more tips and tricks for running a profitable restaurant or to hear restaurant owner success stories, make sure you tune into my podcast, Restaurant Prosperity Formula, found on all the popular podcasting services. Let me start off by saying one of my most attended speeches I give at restaurant and bar shows all over the country is entitled Preventing Theft Behind the Bar. Why do you think that title, that presentation fills the room? Well, I'm sure it's because one of the things I always share with people is if you think your bartenders are stealing, they are. But the twist in the presentation is how do we stop them? The idea is not to catch them and fire them, but to teach them what theft is and how we can change things because we've invested so much time and money in those bartenders. They've got a following and the reason why they're stealing, it's really our fault because we've not done our job. So again, why does it fill the room? It's because theft is a fact of life in the restaurant industry. But the truth is, while theft is a fact of life, believe it or not, with the right systems in place and management inspecting those systems on a regular basis can virtually eliminate theft from your restaurant. So this video is not gonna be about how awful employees are and how they steal from you. In fact, I just feel the absolute opposite of that sentiment. I believe that you need to be able to trust your employees. I believe that with the right systems in place and management inspecting those systems on a daily basis, you can keep honest people honest. I believe that your employees want to do a good job and most don't understand that they are stealing if they are. Also, before we go into this, I know what you're thinking. Well, I've got cameras. Well, I'm going to tell you why cameras are not the solution. And don't get me wrong. I love cameras. But when somebody steals something, they could flip you the bird right in the damn camera. What are you going to do? Are you going to walk in, you know, to your restaurant and grab yesterday's tape? That's how old I am. We had VCR tapes right now. It's digital. And you're going to watch yesterday. Hey, boss, what are you doing? Oh, I'm watching yesterday. That's a great use of your time. And so what if you catch somebody who's stolen something in today's labor market? You could fire them right now. Nobody's going to call you for a reference and they're going to get a job right next door like that. There is no fear in that. So cameras are good for acts of violence, theft, um, fights, um, not the same as act of violence, but you get the idea, like seeing something that happened and we want to pinpoint, but when it comes to theft, it's not going to deter theft. So now let's go into a short list of some of the systems and POS reports that you should be looking at on a daily basis to keep honest people honest. Again, systems in place with management looking at those systems on a daily basis, keep honest people honest. Well, let's start off with a bunch of reports right from the POS system. Your point of sale system is probably the most important piece of equipment you've ever purchased in your restaurant right now. Yeah, I know you want to kill it. Like you, you hate your POS when it goes down or doesn't do what's necessary and so on. But that's not, I care about the reports. So the first POS report we're going to talk about is a transfer report. Yeah, every shift, look at the transfer report. If you allow employees to transfer items from one employee, employee to another, from one ticket to another, like I'm sitting at a bar, I'm moving to the, the dining room, I'll just transfer your ticket to another server. Well, we do this for convenience for our guests, but the truth of the matter is I can transfer. If I know somebody's paying cash, they sit down and they order a soda and there's two, three bucks right there. They go to close out. They don't give a card. They give cash and I have a new customer sit down. I can move before I close that ticket out. I can transfer that soda to another ticket. And when I close out this ticket, cause it was cash, I get $3. And do this behind the bar with beer and so on. Now it is more limited today because cash transactions are few and far between, but it is a way that I can make more money. But if you pay attention to the transfer report and see that 
somebody's routinely doing this, you can nail them for theft. Another second POS report is a no-sale report. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'd rather have a, the no-sale key completely taken from the, the register. There's a reason why the no-sale warning is the full size of the monitor going no-sale because it says stealing. I get it. You've got to give change and do all these things. Well, those are excuses. But let's say you're going to live with the excuses and you're going to give your bartenders, your cashiers, the ability to hit a no-sale to open the drawer. Well, the truth again is I, as a bartender, can say a, a customer order stuff, I can ring it all up. I'll go, that's a uh, $25 spin to get their money. They don't give me a credit card. They give me cash. As soon as I see that I turn to the register, I hit no sale. It immediately voids that whole, everything I rung up opens the drawer and I can give the guests their exact change the way it's supposed to be. And I've got to keep track of the extra money that's in the drawer do it with toothpicks, cherry stems, paper clips, rubber bands. They each have a dollar value. I'm going to strew them throughout my bar and I'm going to double check at the end of the night how much money I need to pull from the drawer that's hanging around in what I look like as a messy bartender. So you need to look at that no sale report because you're going to immediately see a void and all of that gone. As soon as they hit no sale, I've got you. The third POS report is a comp report. If you're allowing your bartenders to actually do it, or even managers, we've got to keep managers on us. Are we paying attention to what we're comping? The fourth report is a void report. Again, why are we voiding products? Is there a reason why? How often does it happen? Again, these could be reasons that don't exist. And you may have a manager that's decided to steal because they've got a, a ticket or a, a key, I should say, that could make cash tickets disappear and pocket the money. So by paying attention to those reports and telling everybody you pay attention to those reports on a shift by shift basis, people won't do those things. Those things that I just described, they won't do them. And last but not least is a very simple system that I put behind the bar and in the kitchen called the key item tracker. We count five to 15 items on a day-to-day -day basis, every shift, what we started with, how many we prepped or purchased, what we could have sold, what we actually sold from the POS system, and we verify the count. We see what was left on the shelves and what the math says it should be. And I see if there's a variance, meaning I could have somebody stealing from me if it's not on the way sheet. By looking at these systems and these POS reports, every shift, you'll be able to trust and verify that your team is not stealing. See, it's not that we have bad employees. It's that we don't have a company culture where we set things up that people understand what theft is. And more importantly, they know we're looking, which means we keep honest people honest. If you're tired of not being able to leave your restaurant because no one else knows how to run it, I want to make sure you know it doesn't have to be that way. You can leave your restaurant. It is possible to build a team of people who know how you want the restaurant to run with trained and responsible people in place. You can give yourself time away. What would you do if you had time away from your restaurant? Would you sleep better? Would your relationships improve? Would you feel more relaxed? These are all things you deserve to experience as a business owner. It's why we own our own businesses. If you would like to learn how to own a restaurant that doesn't depend on you to be successful, click the link in the description to watch a free video to learn exactly what you have to do. Also, be sure to subscribe to get my weekly tips and watch these two videos to get more information and guidance for running a successful restaurant.